So the discussion related to voter outreach to black Americans was brought up during the debate. And for whatever reason, uh, Pete Buttigieg managed to get away from this discussion relatively unscathed. Nonetheless, there was a moment where Cory Booker made an absolutely powerful point, and he hit Joe Biden in a really, really powerful way that is going to leave a bruise. So um, he hit him for not agreeing to legalize marijuana. We covered this video um, this week, and Joe Biden said in the year 2019 that he believes marijuana could be a gateway drug. I'm paraphrasing, but that's basically what he said. So um, Cory Booker had basically the perfect response to it, the response that we all had when we heard the news that Joe Biden said that. And this was absolutely great. I wanted to return back to this issue of, of black voters. I, I have a lifetime of experience with black voters. I've been one since I was 18. <laughs> Nobody on this stage should need a focus group to hear from African-American voters. Uh, black voters are pissed off and they're worried. They're pissed off because the only time our issues seem to be really paid attention to by politicians is when people are looking for their vote. And they're worried because the Democratic Party we don't want to see people miss this opportunity and lose because we are nominating someone that doesn't isn't trusted, doesn't have authentic connection. And so that's what's on the ballot. And issues do matter. Yes, I, I have a lot of respect uh, for, for the vice president. He has uh, swore me into my office as a hero. This week I hear him literally say that I don't think we should legalize marijuana. I, 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 I thought you might have been high when you said it. <laughs> and, and let me tell you. country is already legal for privileged people and it's one the war on drugs has been a war on black and brown people and so let me just let me just say this with more african americans under criminal supervision in america than all the slaves since 1850 do not roll up into communities and not talk directly to issues that are going to relate to the liberation of children because there are people in congress right now that admit to smoking marijuana while there are people our kids are in jail right now for those drug crimes and so these are the kind of issues that mean a lot to our community, and if we don't have somebody authentically, we lost the last election. Let me just give you this data example. We lost in, in Wisconsin because of a massive diminution, a lot of reasons, but there was a massive diminution in the African-American vote. We need to have someone that can inspire, as Kamala said, to inspire African-Americans to the polls. At so besides the fantastic line about Joe Biden possibly being high to say something like that, I mean, there was so much substance packed into that little clip that I really want to applaud Cory Booker. I've been incredibly critical of him, and I do not support him. Um, he's not in my top 10 out of all the candidates running, probably. Well, maybe. It depends. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm a Bernie supporter, right? Diehard Bernie person. But, I mean, you've got to give credit where credit is due. He made some solid points about the Democratic Party that needed to be heard on a national stage. He made the point that... Black voters are pissed off, rightfully so, because their issues are only paid attention to when people are looking for their vote. So once every four years, you know, there's all this discussion about black voters and what we can do to improve their lives. And then once the election is over, um, they get ignored and abandoned. And this is the most loyal constituency that the Democratic Party has. And they have used and abused black Americans for years, not delivering on public policy that would help them, right? So he's bringing up a very valid point, and Democrats need to pay attention, and they need to listen and actually improve, right? Because you can only use a constituency in this brazen of a way for so long until they abandon you. And in 2016, we started to see that this constituency, black Americans who have been loyal they're not too happy with the Democratic Party, and they're starting to just stay home. And it's not just them, right? Many voters are doing this, but this is a loyal constituency that the Democratic Party must be able to re retain. So what Cory Booker is saying here is you have to deliver on policy. You can't keep sweeping their needs under a bus. You can't keep doing this. So reaching out to them... It shouldn't just be something that you do once every four years. Like, you've got to talk to them, engage them, and actually act. So, I mean, that was a really powerful point. Um, on top of that,
I want to read a quote. He said, With more African Americans under criminal supervision in America than all the slaves since 1815, do not roll into communities and not talk directly to issues that are going to relate to the liberation of children because there are people in Congress right now who admit to smoking marijuana while there are people in jail for those drug crimes. On top of that, he made the point that marijuana in this country is already basically legal for privileged people and the war on drugs has been a war on black and brown people. I mean, that comment deserves a standing ovation. Absolutely. And, you know, even though I have my criticisms of the Democratic Party and a lot of people running for president, the way that so many of them are talking openly about how horrible the war on drugs has been, particularly to black and brown people, you know, Bernie brought it up, Tulsi brought it up, um, Cory Booker brought it up, Andrew Yang talks about it all the time. This is a really nice change, right? You you have to talk about this. The war on drugs has been a complete failure, and you have to talk about it in these terms. This has devastated communities, right? People have lost their freedom because of a drug that people smoke all the time, that people in Congress admit to smoking jokingly, right? Uh, Bill Clinton admitted to smoking it. I believe George Bush admitted to smoking it. So we can't keep talking about this as if this is only about marijuana legalization. This is a criminal justice issue, and this is a racial justice issue. And I think that Cory Booker did a great job at really laying that out and educating Joe Biden there. Now, Joe Biden tried to respond, and he just, he made matters worse. Throughout the debate, I mean, every time he spoke, it really looked like he was in pain, right? I mean, the look on his face, he, he struggled to collect his thoughts. He lost his train of thought multiple times and would reverse course in the middle of the sentences. He just, he shouldn't be there, right? So he tried to respond and he made matters worse. Now, this isn't a direct response to marijuana legalization, but he's going to defend this idea that he isn't, you know, engaging with uh, communities of color in America and talking to black Americans. Watch what he says and watch how embarrassed he gets. I come out of the black community in terms of my support. If you notice, I have more people supporting me in the black community that have announced for me because they know me. They know who I am. Three former chairs of the Black Caucus, the only African-American woman that ever been elected to the United States Senate, a whole range of people. No, my point no, that's is, not true. The other that's one not is true. here. I said the first. Thank I said the first African-American elected. First, after so my point is that was cringeworthy that was genuinely cringeworthy you have a black female senator right beside you on the debate stage and you forget that she's there and her reaction i thought was great she capitalized on that cory booker capitalized on it i mean what do you say to joe biden what do you say to Joe Biden? Like, when you see the candidates on the debate stage, what you should really be thinking about as a voter is who is going to be best equipped to take on Donald Trump, someone who will be energetic, someone who will be absolutely vicious and ruthless. Think to yourself, is Joe Biden that person? Is Joe Biden really best suited to take on Donald Trump? These debates, time and again, have demonstrated that Joe Biden absolutely is not going to be competent enough to take on Donald Trump. His debate performance is not going to suffice, right? They haven't sufficed. And imagine him going up against Donald Trump. Donald Trump is going to run circles around him. And it'll be all bullshit and nonsense. Donald Trump will espouse right-wing extremist talking points and lies. But what people look for in a president is strength, right? That is one of these factors that Americans seem to love. They really seem to be drawn to people who speak with confidence and certainty, right? When uh, Kamala Harris went after Joe Biden, she demonstrated strength. When Cory Booker went after Joe Biden here, uh, she, he demonstrated strength. When Joe Biden tried to be strong and went after Tom Stair, which was great, I mean, he did it in a really mealy-mouthed way that was kind of boring, like it could have been more impactful. So Joe Biden is not the candidate, and these debates should be showing people that if you want to beat Trump, this electability argument has collapsed. Joe Biden is not electable, right? Polling says otherwise right now, so you can you can disagree with me when it comes to the polls, but let's just trust our guts in this instance, and let's just read the writing that's on the wall. Joe Biden is going to lose to Donald Trump. Time after time, candidates are demonstrating why he's not fitted here. And Cory Booker did a great job at showing people 
why he shouldn't be the nominee. Now, um, I think his chances have um, been diminished. I don't think he's going to win. With that being said, um, we'll see what happens. But either way, phenomenal job to Cory Booker here. Um, credit where it's due. I'm not a fan of him. I don't support him. I think he's a corporatist who takes money from Big Pharma and should be ashamed of himself for that. I think he's known for, you know, grandstanding usually. However, in this instance, you can't deny that that was absolutely phenomenal. Great on the substance. Great performance. Overall, stellar job.